Hey, welcome back everyone to another one of our videos. We are continuing to experiment into the world of 15 millimeter modeling. And when I say we, it's my wife and I. Hi. <laughs> She's uh, inspired me to kind of work on my tanks and stuff. We, we've gotten some Panzer IVs and some T-34s so we could uh, do some basic scenarios. And I thought I would paint up some tanks. So I don't paint one, you know, maybe one or two a week. So this is just kind of starting effort. So I'll, I'll share this first one. This is my first Panzer IV here. I tried to do kind of the, the Russian steps coloring. Hard to see. I, I got it muddied up. But this is uh, kind of some yellow, the green stripes on it. And I used some dark gray to try and highlight some of the, the road wheels and tracks. And on the turret, I took the outer shirts in and cut it open. And then I took the inner door assembly and I cut it in half and tried to glue it open. Let's see, camera focus. But that way, it kind of looks like maybe someone could crawl in or crawl out. And I didn't do both sides, just the one side. So then I took uh, the, the mud spraying effect where I took some white Elmer's glue, watered it down a little bit. I, I think I watered it down too much. Added some brown paint to it and then used an airbrush to shoot the spray the mud on to kind of give it this splattering effect I'm not sure but that way it kind of looks splattered on instead of just paint brushed on so it's not too thick and just made the vehicle kind of dirty so to help with that weathering because if you've seen my other videos I don't like clean so this was kind of the the yellow green kind of Russian camouflage pattern come on focus this one we went tan so my pants before I didn't put the uh, turret shirts in on, just the side shirts in. Uh, this definitely has an Africa core feel it, to it. I didn't shade them with black. I did shade them with like a sapia brown, and then went over the highlight again with some of the tan. And uh, then I did the same thing where I just kind of sprayed some of the mud on. That way, you know, it kind of looks like it's been splattered. So I thought they turned out pretty good. I'm pretty proud of these. I definitely find painting smaller is better because it's easier to hide my mistakes. Plus then when I do make mistakes, you know, if you, yeah, I'm setting it down and talking about it. My wife said, it's off the camera. I know I'm just admiring my work. But uh, in the small scale, what I've found too is when you weather them, you know, not only can you hide mistakes because they're small, but when you do weathering and make them look really dirty, you can hide mistakes as well. I think my next one, I'm going to try a white. We talked about doing winter, and I'm going to try some techniques for wintering. So here's my wife's entry. Yes, it's blue. <laughs> so that's not a mistake. She did that on purpose. We uh, were watching some... My tank. Yeah, it's her tank. Well, we didn't watch. I watched. I was watching Girls and Panzer, and every once in a while I would chuckle or laugh and show her some screenshots, and she was like... Oh, they have gold tanks and pink tanks. And she's like, I want a blue tank. And so she plays the Russians. And uh, I figure if that's going to keep her happy so she can keep playing, she can have a blue tank. If she wants them all to be blue, that's fine. So this is her Girl und Panzer tank. Um, if she could decorate the inside, I'm sure it would also have flowers and puppies. She said no flowers. Puppy maybe. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Oh, tigers. They need to play the German. So there is some blue. And she highlights and shades really, really well. So I was kind of jealous of her work. Now, her tanks are a lot cleaner. She doesn't make as many mistakes as I do. So that was our vehicles. Here's the showcase. So there's our first foray into painting 15 millimeter scale vehicles. Now, we needed to have some buildings. So that's that's my wife's next chore. So, here, put the roof. There you go. Uh, so she started to work on some Russian buildings for me, kind of farmhouse type stuff. And this is the first one she came up with. Got a little window. Here's the thatched roof. And then, of course, you can open it, put stuff inside. But this is what they look like on the outside. Really nice I think she did excellent with the woodwork I don't know if it's coming through on camera but just the the paneling the scrapes in the wood 
and the inside I told her was a little too tall it's kind of hard to get in there to reach to get your figures you got to reach in kind of deep so she said okay we can remedy that so her next one she came up with was a, just a, a tad bit smaller well noticeably smaller uh, shorter to be precise but built in kind of the same way um, we got the thatched roof and then she did an add-on this time the windows are just inset and painted in but now she's got some additional little side part and this this way it's so much easier to get to the figures so here we have a couple Russian farmhouses we can put out then as she's progressing she says, wow we need to have a ruin of some kind so this was her first attempt at a ruined kind of building so she's got some rubble a little bit of grass there the stone work well brick the stucco that's been kind of blown off burnt down blowed up inside this time on the inside she actually detailed the inside of the building so the the brick is colored in because you can see the inside on this one <laughs> yeah you can't see the inside because the roof on those is done but yeah since these are blown open uh, you can see she's got a floor fireplace some rubble in here I mean so these are outstanding now because these are gonna be for 15 I actually don't have any 15 millimeter infantry yet we're we're still converting slowly over to 15 but here's a 20 millimeter guy so I mean it's, it's a little big but you know it just looks gorgeous putting your figures in there looks great so that was her first attempt at a destroyed little building but I want a two-story that way we can put stuff up top so she's experimenting now with how to make a two-story so here we have the beginning so a much bigger wall this is a much bigger building section but I love the way she's shaded the stucco I don't even know what they call that stuff they put over the plaster the way it's crackled She's got it on the, the stone basing. In here again, it's all painted on the inside. You can see some of the bracing coming out. So this is all hand painted and, and crafted by her. So this wasn't a kit. This is something she actually created. Here you've got the pock marks inside the brick, a window door. So this was actually more building than the other one. Um, not much of a second floor so in 15 million you might be able to fit you know one or two men but she's just experimenting so her one of her next buildings well I'm not sure but um, as she gets to it you know I've shown her where some of the kits have the floor that you can take off or the ruined floor so she'll you know eventually make a bigger ruined one with more of a floor or then work on making a one where you can take one of the floors off so but this was I mean just like her third her third building fourth building and I pretty much said yes make more because I'll show you one of my buildings here let me let me pause it just a second okay. I'll show you one I, I went to grab one of my buildings so this is what my wife comes up with she she sits down she's watching some show on Amazon TV and and she's coming up with this and I'm like yeah but this is what I made <laughs> this is this took me a long time to take craft sticks and break them down and to make a, a building that I could fit a person inside of and give it a roof. So, you know, that that's what I came up with. And uh, she's like watching television and she makes one of these. But then she said, well, I'm not done. All right. So what was her next project? the burning farm now we have it set I say we she made it so I could take the flame out um, so let me see if I can do this without it falling apart here well I'm trying to show it off so I'm trying to get it angled otherwise I can't see it it's from the top so here's the front she's got doors And if you need to, you just can take the fire out. That way it like, looks like it's been burnt down. We'll leave the flame in. So she's got flame coming out of some holes. Um, 
You can see some of the framework through the smoke. And the building itself is this great color, kind of a burnt charred color. So the one thing you can't see is on these doors, the uh, sad thing about the doors is they, um, on the inside, they have this great charred effect, like wood char, and so you can't really see it um, because of the way the doors are open. She's pulling the flames out right now so you can see what it looks like. Uh, she just realized that one of the flame markers was still a little wet, so she has some orange. She's going to have to fix it up, but this is what it looks like without the flame in it. And you can really see the detail in the burnt and charred wood. Spin it around. And then that's where, oops, some of the paint came off. But again, the detail with the framework is just outstanding. Now, another thing she does too, she made some timber here for um, like one of the city ones but this is burnt down wood and it's done in such a way that the outside is kind of scored and so it has a wood texture and then you can actually get to the burnt side and I really don't know how that's coming through on camera I can't tell if that's focusing in good but um, in person you can see the, well, like the, the crocodile scaling of the wood as it burns and it came through oh, this one not so much but on the tips you can tell where it's charred a little bit so I'm hoping you guys can see the detail on these so that's that's what she's been working on uh, so we got tanks we got some figures and I'm hoping that when we put them out onto the field of battle thinking this is all gonna look pretty <laughs> I got the camera close to the table so it's hard to but yeah if we just put it all in there um, it all looks pretty good so the next thing we got to do is upgrade our foam mat somehow I got the foam mat I don't have a, a flocked or textured environment because when we play, uh, table space is a premium, and so these foam pads, I just spray painted them green, so they kind of have a grass effect. I can put a couple two by four sections, and we can actually play a little game on it. And now that we've got some houses, we actually have some terrain that we can play with, and we actually have uh, a little. I want to say cityscape, but really this was meant to be kind of rural here. There. Now it's complete. <laughs> Not much room to maneuver, but uh, once we get these out on the table with some of our shrubbery and some sandbags and bags and things that she's made, um, I think we'll actually have a nice looking table once I make us a nice little foam pad to play on. So that's what we've been up to. Share your thoughts. Let us know what you think. Are you having fun? Yes. <laughs> she's having fun. It was nice because she, she's not a real big war game fan. Um, but somehow she just said she likes to build. And she's like, well, shoot, I'll just build stuff. And so she just sat down. And sure enough, she's building me terrain. So I might not get to play her as much as I would like. But I do get to enjoy, enjoy the benefits of her labor. So thank you, honey. You're welcome. All right, guys. Um, yeah, if you want to see a particular building or anything like that, let us know. Um, other than that, we will talk to you later. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully we can get a game and put some of these out and you can kind of see how it looks. So we'll talk to you later. Bye.